ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Reveal Report with another great episode on this Friday, kicking off your weekend with something very interesting. We're going to get into our topic, which is the eclipse and the CERN connection. Is there one? Is there something going on between both those things? What about NASA setting up a program on the same exact day? Wow. Is there any correlation between these three things or our conspiracy theorists going a little bit wild and crazy. We're going to get into it. We're going to talk about it. I thank you for joining us. Remember to please like, subscribe, and share. And don't be a menace to society in the chat, guys. Because if you're a menace, you're going to get banned and get thrown out. This is a great community with great people coming out here to learn and uh, share their truth. So we appreciate the love and support. And if you want to be a part of it and you're new, please subscribe and share. Guys, we want your help. We want you to subscribe and be a part of the chat and help us. So uh, be good, be kind, be gentle, and, and be nice to others in the chat, guys. I'm your host, George Iceman, for this Friday night. And uh, guys, we got a big one for you. What is going on in this world? What's happening? Is there any occult connection? Maybe. We'll talk about that. We'll get into that. And I hope you guys appreciate it. And listen, guys, for all those supporting me on PayPal, I thank you so much. It means a lot. Everything goes a very long way. Thank you, Lisa. I am last week. She helped us out. Uh, and unfortunately, we didn't have a show, but we're doing it tonight, guys. And uh, next week, Gary Wayne is coming on the show. And we're going to have to figure this out because he's interested in discussing uh, something in the supernatural, in the paranormal world. I love that topic. You guys know I was involved in that for a very long time. So, um, yeah, we're going to get into it. Orbs. What do they mean? Is there a history of orbs? What's going on with orbs and ghosts as we dabble into the supernatural and the paranormal with Gary Wayne right here next Friday? We hope you join us. Guys, get into it. And here we go in the chat already. George, did you watch the eclipse? The answer to that is no. I was inside at a Target. I stayed inside. I went to Target because, you know, I love my Target, and I thought Target was a great place. I don't want to be a part of the hoopla. So I went in, and um, I, I grabbed a coffee, I think, or something, maybe a um, – or no, a protein. I think I grabbed a, a protein milk they had there. So, no, I did not watch the eclipse. But I'm sure a lot of you did, and we're going to get into that. So I thank you all for joining us. All right, let's get into it. Please welcome my uh, co-host and author – has many books on Amazon and uh, does a great thing for the community in, in trying to get them to come to Christ and helps a lot of veterans and does a really, a lot of good work, guys. So let's bring her on. Please welcome us, Jesse Zaboder. Jesse, how are you? Hey, hey, George. I was kind of laughing that you were in Target. I actually was at the post office and we had so much cloud coverage, nobody was seeing anything. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not interested. I know what this is all about. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to participate. It, it's, uh, um, yeah, I, I wasn't in Canada, by the way. Someone's saying, um, were you in Canada? No, I wasn't in Canada. There's no Target in Canada. I was in the States. <laughs> I was going to say, they have Targets in Canada? No, no Target there. It would have been great, actually. Uh, everyone has their thing. You know, Jesse, their escape. So mine is going to Target. You know, if I walk around with a coffee, I wonder what they got here today. But they have some really clean things. Guys. I know this is about the eclipse, but I got to say, and I'm trying to put them over, but I, I found in a food aisle, there's some very clean items, some very good things. And so I went to check it out and yeah, man, you know, it is what it is. So guys, let's get into it. The eclipse, it happened and it was on April the 8th, guys, the solar eclipse. They say history in the making. So many connections to the eclipse, guys that what happened, what transpired, and side effects. Are there any? I mean, is there something that happened um, to human beings during the side effects? Well, mm -hmm. let us begin first, first, with what it looked like in some parts of the world. Here is a video of the solar eclipse with all the clouds and what it looked like in Niagara Falls, the American side. I want you to take a look and then we'll get into it and uh, share our thoughts. Here it is. Oh my 
goodness. Okay, so first of all, we turned our lights off because we don't want to ruin this experience for anyone else here in Niagara Falls. I'm going to move out of the way. My photographer will zoom in on some of the crowds, but again, it's really dark here. Look at all of the lights shining across over in Canada. Thousands of people are witnessing this here in Niagara Falls, New York, and on the other side in Canada. Unfortunately, we cannot see the sun right now. It is completely covered by clouds, but it's dark in the middle of the day. Now, this just happened, so we have another probably two, one and a half minutes of this total darkness. A lot of people disappointed that the clouds were going to totally ruin this experience for them earlier, but I would say this is an amazing experience. Can you hear? Can you hear that crowd? Screaming now as we are getting a glimpse of the sun. Okay, it peeped through a little bit there through the clouds, but now it just went back behind the clouds. Again, still very dark, so we're still very excited here in Niagara Falls. I talked to a lot of people from across the Northeast who came to witness this, and they said, no better place to witness something like this than in front of this beauty of Niagara Falls. Hmm. That, that's interesting that they actually, you know, it went dark there. I wonder almost if they turned off the lights because I know, you know, in areas where we were, there was cloud coverage, but it wasn't dark like that. You know, we still had light outside the whole time. Um, so that's interesting that they experienced dark like that. Yeah, it, it was it was it was quite the sight and pretty scary, actually. Um, to see that, imagine daytime out of nowhere, we see complete darkness, scary, almost biblical. And a lot of people were, 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 were trying to pay attention. I was, uh, during the beginning in Philadelphia, and then I went to New York, uh, New Jersey, New Jersey, sorry, uh, during this process. Now it was dark. It was getting really dark in Jersey, but I didn't witness the, 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 the five or minutes or so. Yeah, I wasn't there. I didn't want to be a part of it. Some people said, Jessica says, the eclipse made me feel disoriented as hell for a while. Interesting that you say that um, because a lot of people uh, mentioned something about not feeling well, feeling under the weather, feeling a little bit sick. And it's interesting to see what a particular uh, news outlet had to say about this because they were discussing it and talking about it. Is it a coincidence or what was the meaning of it? Let's take a look and I'll get your comments on that. Here it is. Excitement isn't the only feeling in the air ahead of this afternoon's much anticipated solar eclipse. Uh, many concerned social media users are claiming that this cosmic overlap is causing them to suffer what they call eclipse sickness with symptoms ranging from insomnia to headaches and even wonky menstrual cycles. These uh, allegations of this kind of somatic uh, foreshadowing serves in the week leading up to Monday's event. Needless to say, concerned parties uh, were concerned that they this was actually putting their health at retrograde. Some people claimed they had headaches. One concerned citizen said, I've been feeling physically sick for a few days now, and I feel it's because of the Mercury retrograde and the upcoming solar eclipse. Does anyone else feel off or sick these days? And some even said their menstrual cycles uh, either synced with the eclipse or it just kind of threw them off kilter and this seemed to be like a recurring theme i think they claimed this during the 2017 eclipse too fortunately scientists have haven't found a correlation between eclipses and these symptoms it sort of seems like the equivalent of when uh, old timers say my knees acting up and that's definitely the sign of, of a tsunami so this appears to be like a case of uh, cosmic hypochondria in fact, uh, NASA even posted after the Great Eclipse of 2017, they said it is sort of a confirmation bias. There is no more correlation and eclipse in your health than there is a relationship between your health and a new moon or any other cosmic phenomenon. Cosmic phenomenon. People feeling weird and um, interesting. What are your thoughts on that, Jess? Yeah, it's interesting. I saw reports about that. 
uh, some of those same things going up. Um, others feeling like there was like changes in pressure. So if they were sensitive to uh, pressure changes, which can cause migraines, headaches, earaches, things like that. Um, people were saying they were feeling things as though they were off in those ways. So very interesting. Interesting. And again, you know, is this once in a lifetime? Is it um, a, a coincidence? It happens a few years, blah, blah, blah. So many different uh, comments about this because, you know, they wanted to say it was 100 years or something like that. Um, you know, in the occult, it, it, you look for, you know, new moons and so forth. There's meanings to everything here on conducting rituals and magic. And so this one, the occult end of it, let's start off with that, because I think that's key here, Jesse. Um, in During these time periods, uh, I will say that the moon, um, when it's a new moon, for instance, the new moon represents new beginnings, okay? It's a phase um, and time to represent new beginnings as we plant seeds for the future. This is the doctrine uh, occultically for witches and practitioners and magic. It's a good time to set clear your intentions for that month ahead. To clarify your goals, start new projects, and acknowledge your growth since the previous new moon. This is what the representation is for the new moon when it comes. However, when it's passing over, guys, this is the solar eclipse. This is also a time that I will say is when the veil is the absolute thinnest between, they say, our world and the supernatural world. Some will say that other side, where it is easily to communicate. Now, in magic, uh, some have different perspectives, you know, uh, when you're practicing and you're a practitioner. On doing rituals on this date, it is not recommended for anyone who's new and fresh and just still learning the craft to participate in any type of ritual if you don't know what you're doing. Very dangerous. You can have many different witches will come out here and say that they've had hell break loose in their house that you cannot control, which again, I'm getting to the point here where <laughs> it's a dangerous time. Is it biblical? Because they don't want you participating in these rituals, if you don't know what you're doing. Hence, the eclipse is not good for manifestation. And if you don't know what that means, basically, if you're trying to manifest something, it's not a good time. It's not even, a, it, it, some will use that time to, to communicate with the other side, but it's chaotic. It's very hostile energy, hard to control what's coming in. So, Occultically, this is, you'll hear people, oh, it's all these witches doing rituals. Not really what you think. You really got to know what you're doing if you're going to participate on that. And I bring it up because if it's what I'm saying, if it's for those who really understand energies and the veil, for those who really know how to do a ritual on this day, you're going to be very high up, very elite in order to harness, because again, this is like chaos magic. It's chaotic energy. It's hard to control. That veil is so thin, you don't know what's coming in. So you have to be very careful. On that note, I'd like to get your comments and feedback on my analysis of a ritual on the eclipse. Yeah, I think I think you're exactly right. I, you know, I know that it was used by the elite, and there were specific things that we saw that they're going to be looking for um, you know, we've talked before how they're always looking for, you know, signs, wonders, prophecies, uh, different events. They're, they're going to be looking through scripture for um, the signs of seasons and times. They're going to use the stars and different um, events that happen in the sky to determine those things. And some of the things that they were watching for that 
you know, this, this was the season for that, um, included the zodiacs and, you know, they'll overlap different zodiacs. You have like the regular one, which I heard a lot of people reporting, you know, according to, uh, the Chinese zodiac that this is considered the year of the dragon. So there were a lot of people saying that that eclipse was going to be connected to, um, you know, the image of a dragon going across the sky. Well, what was interesting is that, you know, in the system, they don't just use one zodiac, they use several. So an, in another zodiac, the Egyptian one, um, this time and season is also the season for Isis, the woman. So you literally had the woman riding in on the dragon's back, which that goes to the book of Revelations. So they were seeing this as a possible season and time and event for things. And they were trying to uh, summon something or manifest something very specifically. And that had to do with the X. And, you know, those who study the upper teachings, one of the things that they're going to look at are um, the sigils for uh, what we would consider fallen angels or fallen beings from heaven. And so, you know, who's the big time um, principality that they're looking to make contracts with in the end times, who also has an X represented in his sigil, that is Abaddon or Apollon. So I think that's why we saw, you know, the image of the X across the sky. I know I was seeing a lot of those in the different, um, I guess we call them, you know, the little chem, chem cloud things that they do. Uh, there were a lot of X's that were showing up across the skies. And, and that when we go to a deeper look, you know, we know that this occult is a, a system. They're going to be setting things in place for their new world agenda. One of the projects that they were working with that with um, was called Project X out of uh, Greenbrier, Virginia. And that was one of the areas not far from some of that imagery where we saw the X in the sky as well. So I, I think there was a lot of a lot of things going on all at one time. You know, you mentioned that. And I want to talk about a video that came out with some biblical associations. And I had another video, but it got deleted. Guys, don't ask me. I don't know how it did. Gone. They, they just took it off because they knew you were going to use it. Tonight. Of course they did. That's <laughs> that's what they do. And I want to play this. It's a, a, a YouTuber did a quick thing. And I thought I'd just share his stuff because it was pretty good. So we could shed some light on it. Take a listen. Watch this. What I'm about to tell you about the solar eclipse on April 8th is going to blow your mind. In Matthew 12, Jesus says, An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except for the prophet Jonah. In Luke 17, it says, As in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the coming of the Son of Man. So check this out. The path that the solar eclipse will be taken on April 8th will literally go through the cities of Jonah, Texas, several towns and cities named Nineveh, also get this rapture indiana it also crosses where the ark is in williamstown kentucky but that's not all it will also be taking place under the constellation cetus which means the well god is literally giving us the signs of the hour we are in right now he says god is giving us the signs notice all the towns that they mentioned mm -hmm. the, the rapture uh like sodom and gomorrah destruction um in some warnings, biblically, once this happens, it's basically giving you 40 days. 40 days to do well with God, to seek forgiveness of sin, to cleanse and purify yourself before his vengeance is upon us. Mm -hmm. People say, of course, that it's supposed to be three days. No, it was like one. Three days. That's an entire different conspiracy we could get into on the after show on Patreon tonight following this program. We're going to get into it in regards to, are you ready, Jesse? The sun. Hmm. What am I referring to? The sun. Is 
there's some type of fake sun up there? I mean, conspiracies are crazy. Are we technically in the three-day period of darkness? Guys, there is a lot at play here, biblically, religiously. And I'm going to get into that. Jesse, I want your comments because this is spooky stuff. Nothing is coincidental is what I learned. And the NASA program where they've decided to launch sounding rockets into the moon's shadow during the solar eclipse. NASA will launch three sounding rockets during the total solar eclipse on April 8th to study, that's what they say, how the Earth's upper atmosphere is affected when sunlight momentarily dims over a portion of the planet. That's just the heading of what this is all about. But what I found very interesting here, Jess, is the name, the Apep, which is also Apepheus, which is a Egyptian god, a serpent god that attacked Ra, which is also known as Ray of Light, Ra, the, the god sun. of sun. How interesting, Jesse, that the name of NASA's program represents chaos and destruction of light. Talk to me. Am I the only <laughs> one who sees that occultically? The well, meat? no, I mean, there's so much more. I mean, even the symbology that comes from Upper Golden Dawn teachings, which is a lot of the end time teachings, you know, you've got three rockets that as they go up, look like three pillars. You know, we know that that's the base of the three chord contracts. And then on top of that, those three pillars significantly are used within um, the brotherhood, within Nazism, um, to represent the threefold fallen military of Lucifer. So, you know, like when you get into the upper golden dawn teachings, you know, they use those three pillars to represent the 72 keys of, of Solomon. So I don't think any of it's by accident. You know, we're all there. Everything we see is just upper system teachings and beliefs and uh, Solomonic magic. Apep, the God serpent causing ruckus, chaos, and destruction towards the sun. Well, do you think it's all over the keys to the abyss? Like, I think the abysses have to somehow be connected in all of this. What do you mean? Be more specific for our viewers. Well, because you have Abaddon, who's supposed to have the keys to the abyss, mm -hmm. to open them in the last days. But then all of a sudden you have Ra and Apophis kind of fighting each other for power. And, you know, it's kind of comical as to who who gets to be the one, you know, who's going to have the power, the control over militaries and armies is what I see it as. Let's get into NASA, Jesse. Or sorry, uh, CERN. Because I think that's, that's key. And... Yeah. CERN was to test the world's most powerful um, particle accelerator during April's solar eclipse to search for invisible matter that secretly powers our universe. Now, you guys could scroll and, and do some searching. I try to. I try to. And I was lucky enough to find at least one article. And I found it in the Daily Mail because they're scrubbing it. In fact, they're trying to autocorrect it, saying that this is a conspiracy. That CERN already was set up in March and that we are claiming, when I say we, you know, certain people that believe in the occult world and magic, we believe in this. We think it exists. I, I believe in the supernatural power and realm. And I try to warn people to be careful not to dabble with this stuff. And I believe that the methodology behind them doing this was to open up a doorway, a portal to allow 
something in. I think it was one of the abyss portals. That's what I think they're trying to open. Trying to open up the abyss. What abyss? Well, you have several, but scriptures, the book of Revelations talks about the abyss in the last days that Abaddon has the keys to open. And I think that's what they were trying to open. The abyss. Is it to allow fallen angels in? Demons, spiritual beings? I think that's the goal to to allow in those that are chained to the lower realms. Wow. Just think about that. This is how crazy our world. Now, again, guys, we don't know to be certain. I'm, I'm the first one to say this is my theory. If you're a practicing in the occult, that you're, you're going to use every possible opportunity to open up these portals and gateways. It's crazy. It's weird and it's scary, but there is also negativity attached to this. I said it's chaotic magic. I said you cannot control the energies. Bad things sometimes happen. And in fact, one particular individual, I'm going to share a picture of this guy right here. <laughs> Peter, Peter Higgs. Higgs. Dies at 94. Jesse, do you know who this guy is? Yeah, he was one of the major physicists that was working with the Hydron Collider that they call Alice. And that was part of the, you know, the Stargate projects through the U.S. military back in the 1980s. Um, Alice actually broke in 2018 after earthquake and they have not been able to get that hydra hydron collider going again and it seems like as they tried it the lord was just saying no and they didn't get anything open and i believe it came at the cost of some of those people's lives um like peter higgs and when did he die he died on April 8th, the same day as the eclipse. So the day of the eclipse, the guy behind this CERN and physicist, we don't know what his actual ideas were. But I mean, we're not in his head. We never interviewed him, but we could only assume um, from, you know, what we hear from some people, it was negative because he was trying to open up doorways to another universe to allow things in. Again, is this coincidental or has God himself punished this individual and a few others for what they were trying to do? What do you think? Coincidence, Jesse, or by God's vengeful hand, he will have no part of it. Yeah, I think, you know, I think that God is, they're trying to be God. They're trying to dictate things. They're trying to time seasons and events that the Lord has already established. And I think that that comes with a price when you try to mess with. I think you're, you're, um, you're uh, freezing up there, Jess. So maybe yep. just take, yep, there you are. I was just saying, yeah, I think, I don't think it was by accident. I think that. You know, they're trying to dictate what happens. They're trying to control the hand of God. And um, they're finding that they're not able to do that. Now, there was more. Another very powerful individual also died, guys. This is key. And I was trying to get a picture to share with you. But for some reason, it wouldn't allow me to upload this photo of this individual. And this is mainstream news, so you could follow all the information that we give you and do your own research. But Jesse, who else died just a few days ago? Yeah, they had Bennett Braun, who is one of the founding fathers of, um, we'll just say, the psychiatric care uh, for those who are known as SRA survivors or those particularly SRA survivors who have been through uh, the MK Ultra and military programs and the biofeedback in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just you're just freezing up there. Yep. 
What part did you last hear? Uh, just the last part of the uh, the satanic panic. Yeah, so he's um, was the author of what they believe some of the satanic panic, but um, he was highly involved with a lot of the MK Ultra, uh, the managing the healthcare of survivors who had been part of those military projects and experiments and programs, um, you know, from the 60s to the 80s. Wow. And he also died. He did. And that one was, seems really fishy. It sounded like he died from health complications from a fall. A fall. So. Hmm. Guys, listen. I'm just warning everybody. Something's going on supernaturally. And for God's children, we must take the signs given to us to open up our eyes and see what's around us. If he's giving you discernment, read into that discernment because this could be a time of tribulation, maybe not necessarily for us, but for others. So we need to come together. We need to be in prayer. We need to confess our sins and we need to open up our eyes. A lot of miraculous things are about to happen. Once again, for those who'd like to do some research, Jesse, uh, that article was found, where was that, in the New York Times? Yeah, both. Uh, I think both Peter Higgs and uh, Bennett Braun were in the New York Times Excellent. online. Now, another strange occurrence happened during the eclipse. Very strange. I got a quick clip from a YouTuber or TikToker. I found it interesting. I did some more research on it and it, it's very lengthy, but I just wanted to share a 15, 20 second clip, but there's a long video out there. You guys could find it. Take a listen. Let me get your take on what this person had to say. Here it is. We have even more insane eclipse related events coming out. There's this giant strange anomaly that appeared in the ocean right after the eclipse and it looks like it came out of Antarctica. It is still active right now. I'm trying to document this very weird anomaly taking place on Ventu Sky. I don't know what this blob is here, but it's coming from what looks like Antarctica. If we backtrack a little bit, you're going to see it disappear and reappear on the screen. So we move into Monday the 8th, which was obviously three days ago. Watch as we move into Tuesday. This mass pops up with waves of 83.7 feet in height. What in God's name? is this thing moving out of Antarctica as you can see and then it moves up the coast of Africa into the Atlantic Ocean I think it was one of or I'll just say I think it was an ark George an ark like a giant ship what the heck was that yeah I think it's a giant ship I think they're just relocating from where they've had them but I think and that the they're they're moving them they're connected with the with the universal military and i think they were moving them to different places wow and it happened during this time so again using a distraction possibly jesse using this as yeah. a form of a distraction to move this arc very weird very strange of something of that magnitude that 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 size to be right up i mean they're nowhere. massive they're like three tri cities big you know wow and it was found there. They saw it moving. So this is some strange anomalies that are happening all at the same time with the eclipse. We talked about NASA. We talked about the eclipse and its uh, um, timing. Magically, mm -hmm. we talked about the connection possibly to the prophetic sayings from biblical scholars and its association on the towns that it cover its warning of 40 days. We talked about the three nights, three solid nights. Are we in that time? Is it possible? It, it might be. It might be. We're, I mean, I'm more curious if we have a fake sun or not. Well, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Is something going on there? I mean, eh, it's a conspiracy guys, but we get into it. We're going to get more into it at the after show. You're going to want to tune in, guys. It's going to be amazing. As we show some clips and go a little bit into more depth. And I found one particular video I'm going to share with everybody on the after show. I'll get your feedback on it. Very weird. Very strange. But these are things we need to open our eyes and look at it. Again, Jesse, here is the question. Do you believe this is a prophetic sign from God? Everything is calculated and done a certain way. Is this a warning to many people 
about what's coming? You know, it, it's hard to know with this. I think I I see too much control and too much calculation that goes along with, um, you know, a lot of ritual prep things, a lot of ritual prep areas. So it almost seems too calculated to me to be the hand of God. I see them trying to usurp the hand of God, you know, is what I kind of feel. Um, but does it go along with things that I know are in scripture that God has ordained? It does, you know, so that's kind of the interesting thing is that we see these biblical things happening. It's we live in unbelievable times, unbelievable times. Evil people are passing away. Evil people are being exposed. Evil people mm -hmm. are being arrested. Evil is falling apart. I'm, I'm shocked at what I hear. We're, we're seeing major businesses successful for decades, closing up brick and mortar, many shops, bankruptcies. Mm -hmm. Something is happening. Something definitely is going on. I can't put my finger on it, but what I can say is that there's a side to choose. And I know I'm not giving a sermon here, Jess, you know, for everybody watching, but you got to listen to me carefully now. There's almost a line in the sand. You can no longer stand in the middle on that line. You can't be Switzerland or Sweden, whatever you want to say, and be that middle one. Yeah. You got to take a side. You're either with God, or you're against the Lord. I'm really seeing that people that are negative, and this is not just in news and mainstream, I'm seeing it in everyday life. People that I know, bad things are happening to bad people. And, you know, just a few years ago, Jess, Good things are happening to bad people and bad yeah. things are happening to good people. Now. There's that huge shift and we see, you know, nowhere in the history of time have we seen so many uh, military arrests, military people being fired, high level individuals uh, in places of power and authority literally, you know, have lost that power and authority. Um, we even see that in within the system, you know, um, there's a lot going on right now, even with the brotherhood and the, the sovereign military, you know, that they're putting stuff out, putting communications out there, moving their military, their members, um, you know, so I agree with you, like, I, you know, this is not their calculated precision, all of it. Um, you know, there are things that are outside of their control that no matter how hard or how much they try to control it, they're not able to. Jess, I'm going to say this. People need to get right with God. Yeah, They need to get right with God, guys. And I know sometimes you watch my show for, you know, some of the information that we share and um, you like to understand a little bit of the other end of it and, and you know, what Jesse went through or what I went through and how we analyze and decode certain things. And guys, I come from that other side where I thought that was the way. Yeah. And I'm telling you, glory to God. My path was set. I chose Jesus Christ to become my Lord and Savior. I sought forgiveness and healing. And I've seen a shift in my energy. I've seen a shift in my beliefs. I've seen a shift in my patterns. I've seen a shift in my life. I've seen a shift in everyday life. I've seen a shift in everything. When you repent and you come to Christ, change will happen for the better. It don't matter what age you are. It don't matter what height you are, what color you are. It don't matter what religion you are. If you believe in the Holy Spirit 
and you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in your heart, and you believe in him, and you believe that he died on the cross for your sins, you will change your life. Great things will happen. Healing will come to you. Blessings to your home. Change in your everyday thought prep. I'm telling you, you will be filled yeah. with the Holy Spirit. And the time has come. Now is the time. So you need to accept our Lord and Savior. I do, and I'm blessed, and I'm thankful. Whatever he puts forth in front of me is a path he has set, and I am learning every single day. I am learning, and I am proud I made that choice. And I may be new as a believer, Christian, whatever you want to call it. But I will say that God has filled me with an unbelievable amount of spirit. A, I look at things so differently now. I consult with Jesus on my actions. I have a relationship with the Lord. And if there's one thing I could give anyone, if you ask me for advice, if you're to say, George, give us one little tidbit, one piece of advice. What is it? Here it is. And I've said it before. Have a relationship with God. Yeah. Not just in prayer once a week, once a day daily turn to him love him speak to him ask him talk to him you may even fight with him but in the end he will show you the light he will forgive he will show mercy he will be patient because he is glorifying in all things he is love he is compassion he is healing he is forgiveness he is great in all things. So there it is, guys. I've done my speech and my sermon. Have a relationship with God and things will begin to change for the better. Have faith and the Lord will work in mysterious ways. Jesse, anything you'd like to add in hopes for anyone who's watching who may need Christ in their life today? Absolutely. You know, I just did a show on the kingdom living with jesse.com uh, called the key of knowledge. And I take some of those upper teachings and show how, you know, they know the name of God. And that's not just Yahweh. Um, when you put a certain letter at the very top in the middle of those words, like they do in the upper levels of the system, you get Yeshua. So they know the name of the Christ. They know the name of you know, our Lord and Savior, whose name is above every other name. And they know that, you know, when Jesus said, I and the Father are one, like to the occultists, that makes sense because they have the mathematical geometrical proof that Jesus' name, Yahweh and Yeshua are one, right? So, and what does scripture say in, in Luke eleven forty six? You know, it says, woe are you lawyers, those who, who have the law, you know, because you have the key of knowledge, yet you yourselves do not even enter in. You don't touch it. And those who try to enter in, you hinder. Um, so, you know, why do they, why do these upper level occultists, why do they call on Jesus name? Why do, you know, they put these statues of Jesus up where they're doing their energy flows. It's because they know that that name is the name above every other name. And there has to be an acknowledgement of that for everything that they do. So I encourage people to watch that. And, you know, I'm going to be bringing out a bunch more about that. But, you know, where do we begin to build that relationship with the Lord? It comes by, you know, get a Bible, open it up, yeah. read the Bible. Uh, there's so much availability online if you, you know, need to do it on your phone, on your computer. Um, I encourage the NASB version. But, you know, be start to be in the word and just allow the spirit of the Lord to speak to you and reveal these truths to you because everything is there and, and we are able to enter into that relationship with him because he desires that. It's, 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 it's amazing. Quite amazing. Yeah. Guys, I got to say, man, like you you guys are very lucky. You're, you're all very blessed. And some of you may have, you know, things that you're going 
through in life today, but it's a great time and a great opportunity for you guys to see Christ in your life and come to him and, um, and just thank him and appreciate him and love him. And I'm telling you, beautiful things will happen. 100%. Guys, I want to thank you. I don't want to take up too much of your time. It's a Friday. I hope some of you will join the after show on Patreon. It's going to be a great show. And we're going to get into a few interesting things, including the sun. Hmm. Guys, it's going to be crazy. So please join us on Patreon. Thank you for all the supporters who share a little something to keep this show going on PayPal. It goes a long way and helps so much. I'm blessed. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Jesse, if you want to share with everybody how people could support your ministry as well. Yes. Um, I've got two websites. Uh, we support a lot of champions, veterans, survivors, uh, those who need help with monthly income rent. Uh, if you would like to donate for that, you can do so at illuminatethedarkness.com. And then for all of my books, courses, uh, the different events that I'm doing, uh, you can see those at kingdomlivingwithjesse.com. Excellent, guys. And by the way, folks, listen, uh, I got to say that all I'm going to say is this. This week is going to be a very interesting week politically, spiritually. So be in prayer. Give glory to God because without him, we are nothing. Give him thanks, give him praise, raise your vibration, meaning be happy, smile, take your dog out for a walk, look at the sun, get some sunshine, play with your friends, play with your family, do something fun. Stay positive, raise that vibration. Don't be negative and share nothing negative with anyone around you. This is a powerful week, guys, and I'm telling you, we need to be kind and good and better to one another. We need to raise our vibration with love and compassion and forgiveness and healing and give thanks to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Guys, thank you for watching. Remember to join us on Patreon. Coming up next for the after show. And if you can't make it, then watch the show next week. Gary Wayne will be our host. He's going to be in the house, Jesse. It's going to be phenomenal. And I can't wait as we get into the supernatural. And then you're back, of course, following week. And we're going to get into week. some more amazing things. Guys, thank you for watching. God bless and good night.